so here we are again. I'm doing this with less than I would want to or should, but I really just don't got the energy these days, which is kind of odd, because this is kind of a mental relief, but it do take energy nonetheless. So, hmm. I got a fuck ton of deadlines coming up, uh, some of which were only announced this week. Um, realistically, to keep up, one would have to do roughly 200% job. Like 80 hours a week minimum, more like 100 if I had to guess, so 250% job. I don't think that's viable. So I've actually applied for disability accommodation. I mean, I am disabled and I, am, and I should be entitled to disability accommodation. But oddly enough, the reason I applied for it is not because I'm disabled. The reason I applied for it is just because they have insane expectations. Which is kind of something one can't control, I guess. I mean, each to their own and all, but yeah. Uh, oddly enough, that's what, what they're currently expecting is all the module results besides the elective. And one other one, because the other one we haven't even had and apparently we aren't having it during the lecture period. Because someone effed up again, which seemed like a common trend. Like, frequently someone forget to put something on the schedule, schedule and we have to do it outside of our lecture periods. Which is kind of like a real bummer because, hell, people do your jobs, you know. Overall in life, I barely got the energy to do stuff. I went to uni by car yesterday. Um, because I honestly just couldn't hack the social contact and interaction. Today I had uni at the other end of town, so I had to do it by car, because otherwise it would have, would have taken like 150% of the time. Because obviously by car you don't have to stop all the time. Well, you have to stop for lights and so on, but so do trains. Um, you don't have to stop for people to get in and out of the car, so that's something I guess. I really just couldn't have hacked the risk of social interaction. Oddly enough, um, rain. I don't even know where I was going. Like, I'm not well recently, is the best way of putting it. I have managed to go to the tea house twice this week already. It's now. Thursday, yeah, so two out of the four possible days this week I've been. Um, I can't afford it really. Same as I can't afford going to uni by car or going to the other end of town by car. But uh, I guess one I've got to spend what one I've got to spend. Worst case, I've got to sell another collectible. Which is like real bad because I really like these things. But hell. I mean, I am hella privileged to be able to take that as an option, sell something to make some dosh. Then again, uh, apparently the taxman might want VAT on this car, even though theoretically VAT had been paid at, at some stage, though not by me. Um, and I might have a real hard time coughing up that money, because that's going to be a lot that they want, because surprise, uh, they're going to value it on after all the work I'd done, I guess. <laughs> done and had done. Uh, yeah, I actually had a siesta, well, a siesta, a fairly long nap this afternoon, and I still don't think I'm going to have problems sleeping tonight, just because I ain't got no energy recently. So I had to lie down at, like, what, 3pm? It's now just about, just about 8pm. So, solid four hour lie down. Uh, really needed it, and I'm happy I've done it, but don't help me get closer to my deadlines with my project. Well, it helped me get closer, but not close to being done. So, really, I should not sleep, but I don't think that's all too healthy. And I've decided to do some extracurricular uni activities 
even though I have these deadlines, which means next week Friday I'm going to be driving a couple of hundred K, and in mid-August I'm going to be driving another couple of hundred K just for in-person meetings, because in my opinion, uh, one should be able to do uni no matter what, and have free time on the side for hobbies or whatever, and the driving a couple of hundred K for student representation and meeting other people, I'll take that as my hobby, um, because in the end of the day, they can't expect you to have no free time spent 24-7 working. Because surprise, a lot of us live by ourselves, including myself, students that is, uh, because that's how uni works, I guess. And you also have to do your household and all. I mean, I've done my laundry earlier today, I still ain't cleared it out of the machine. Uh, the re only reason I've done it is because yesterday I actually used my last pair of pants, um, which meant I had to do it, so yeah. Uh, it's kind of horrible, but at least I'm on schedule for my four showers a week currently. Something, I guess. Even though I'm economically not in the best spot a lot of the time, I didn't end up buying this pipe because I did have one previously. I've had this one for half a decade or so. But it kind of started kicking the bucket internally because it was cheap. This one's cheap again, but this one at least takes filters, I guess. And yesterday, uh, I did go to a hill nearby and smoke a pipe because summer solace and heaven fest and all that, you know. Which means I did buy some more pipe tobacco once again, even though I theoretically still had some remnants. Which is also financially not the most responsible, but hell, um, I'm still under triple did. I'm still in double digits, so not not triple, not not more, uh, on leisurely spending in a month, uh, with not activities that is not social requirements for existing as a human being, but for just leisurely buyings. I mean, what I consider leisurely. There we go. So. I'm really not too unhappy with what I'm spending, like, on my free time kind of money, because it could be worse, really, like, I'm spending less than on food, less than on rent, probably less than on diesel, so, yeah. Uh, for the... Uh, well, money we've got an announcement that we should have to write a paper for uni. Um, oddly enough, 10 pages. Uh, it's going to be a tight one. I mean, if we had nothing else to do, which theoretically we shouldn't because the modules we started early in the semester should be done, but they ain't. We've only had like half the lectures for most of those. Um... But if it were all we were doing, it would be right. It'd be like 35 hour working week till we're done, which wouldn't be too bad with, I guess. But expecting that on next to lectures, next to other things, is just too much. Like, can't do it. Like, I really ain't got no energy lately. I'm repeating myself, repeating myself, repeating myself. Uh, and now with the tax man, this car. Like, wanting VAT or whatever. If they came and said, oh, give us this much in VAT, I'd say, I pay what I've paid for it in upkeep and expenses and you give me what you think I should pay for VAT and you can have the bloody car because even though I'm emotionally attached to it and I really like having it 
um, I ain't got the energy to deal with the tax man, like, hell, I ain't got no car then, but it's not like I, I, I'd be getting rid of all my things and becoming a monk, which theoretically is an appealing idea, I guess, like, the uh, favour of that idea is growing in my mind, it's not like I'm going to do it anyway, anytime soon at least, but I really like the concept these days. <sighs> I got a uni mate a uh, semester above. Um, she seemed to got no experience within the semester she'd been here. As in, in uni and it kind of put me in an odd spot because I'd, I'd agreed to help her because hell why not uh, everyone deserves some help to some degree because why not and who knows if you throw enough stuff at a wall sometime it sticks so who knows anyone could make it I guess um, I sent them a list of equipment I'd need to do the lights because that's what they asked me to do for, I guess. And they added like four ambiguous terms onto their booking and sent it off as a booking request and none of the four things they requested actually exist as they do. Which is like, why even bother? But I guess we'll find out at work on Monday. Um, might be in effed up cluster but we'll find out I guess that's the fun of it and even if it's effed up I'm pretty sure they'll learn from it well I'm hoping they'd learn from it mm. one thing I've been doing more while driving is informing other drivers if their rear lights ain't working particularly the brake lights To the point where within the past few days of which I've driven the car every single day which is going to be bloody expensive with the diesel I'll come and be tight um, I've done like half a dozen usually it's just a matter of a gesture for them to roll down the window or say excuse me um, though I do get out occasionally if the lights in front are red and I got a chance to and I know I can make it to tell them and back without hindering anyone just hop on out and tell them excuse me i think uh, you might want to check your brake lights if passenger side driver side ain't working it's easier than saying right and left because some people don't get right and left everyone knows where the driver sit because they are in the seat funny how that work i guess but i've actually optimized that term for quite a bit now well the term the phrase just because I don't like friction and social interaction, surprise. And why not figure out the best way of using a term? Uh. I've been I've been doing some of the post-processing for working titles to make a moves, been chopping away at it since Monday, I believe. And I say chopping away at it because I'm actually limited by the speed of the storage. Uh, so, well, the file size is so big I have to put on hard drive platters because they don't have SSDs that big. And surprise, they have limited storage speed, S8 3, I believe, is the connectivity which should be the bottleneck um it do work i guess uh i've decided to denoise like 17 minutes in stills instead of doing a video denoising so it's not going to be temporally consistent but I, I think it's noisy enough that the noise will be considered the same in both scenarios so 
I got 29,000 some hundred frames. Uh, I got therapy. I got therapy week after next, which is what I meant to say before the phone cut off for some odd reason. I don't know why. Um, originally, therapists had proposed, and I'd agreed to it. Um, for us to for now work on me getting legal disability rec recognition. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have made any progress by then, which is math, but it's not like I'm gonna be able to change that. And I somehow feel a bit guilty for wanting to use therapy for the same thing I'm doing here, but with another human, uh, for therapy's sake, I guess, instead of making progress on something like disability or so. Um, oddly enough, I do feel guilty, even though I'm fairly confident they're happy to do it, my therapist, that is. And... Uh, I mean, health insurance is paying for it, so it's within the idea of therapy, really, but I still don't feel all too comfortable because we'd aimed on figuring out something else first. And then again, I only got so much capacity. Still feel warm, but don't got no ember no more. <gasps> uh, like I feel guilty a lot of the time, even though I believe I'm doing the least bad one could do. Or perhaps even the best. It's just the idea of I've been trained throughout my life by society as a whole that I am what has to adapt to be normal. And I'm not too sure that's how it should be. Like, I'm actually fairly confident I should not think that way. Because that's like dangerous thinking for myself in the long term. But not like I can change it really, eh? Well, I guess there might be ways to figure it out, but that's like a bigger project. And I might want to bring this up with my therapist, actually. Because I guess that's the idea of therapy. Like, we've well established the idea that i got self-esteem issues. Yeah, I believe uh, these days I believe I'm somewhat down to have figured out where those are based. But I don't know how to deal with them. I mean, I'm not a mental health professional. And not realistically, I, su I suppose in the past people would have just gone about and ignored them for the rest of their life. Lived around them, but I don't know if I can do that. Like, I might be able to manage doing it, but whether it's sustainable or not is a question. And at the end of the day, I ain't in this for the short to medium term, I'm in this for the long term. Because it's not like I get the choice, and I'm apparently still fairly young. All I can do to reduce that, which is societally accepted, is smoke. Various forms of tobacco. Uh, or, yeah, tobacco. I mean, I believe I've done more thinking than a lot of people of my age have. And as humans, you only, I believe that everyone starts actively looking 
of uh, clarity and understanding of the bigger picture at some point in their life. That's what I want to believe at least. I mean, I started a couple of years back, I'd claim. I'm sure some start in kindergarten and I wouldn't be surprised if some only start on the deathbed. And I mean, somehow it's uh, childish of me, or I can't help but think it's childish, because I am not too rarely accused, or I have been in the past, well, actually it was only one incident, but still, in my mind it's quite a lot of the time, that I was accused of uh, having no empathy. The more I think about it, the less I think that person knew what they were talking about, they're just bullshitter, but um, still stuck with me as an issue. I think the problem is not, I don't care enough about others, I think the problem is I care too much. Which is to my own detriment, to be fair. Now I'm wondering, what caused my phone to stop recording earlier? I didn't even touch it then. Like, that's slightly concerning. Because I still ain't got no backup phone, because I'm not that well off, surprise. I mean, it's like, what? The second or third most expensive thing I own. The most being this car, surprise. Um, and that's slightly concerning, I guess. One thing that's all this pipe tobacco is uh, surprisingly cheap, like, with taxation. Like, 100 grams cost 15, 20 euros. Which is, like, nuts, if you think of it. Like, 15, 20 euros buy your, what, two packets of cigarettes in Germany? Oh, because just pipe isn't enough, of course I'm going to smoke a cigarette now, why not? Yay, cancer. Smoking kills. Thing with pipes, I did not inhale. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm still real happy and fairly proud that I managed to install this camera in the car. I did manage to get the airbag light off. I did have to buy an, a second OBD tool for that though, because apparently the one I'd had before didn't have enough features. I didn't do the thing which one might think is reasonable to do and splurge because I don't have the money, surprise, and buy one that lasts for good. But I'm now from bottom tier up to mid tier, I guess, with OBD tools. Which means I can reset the airbag light to this, so I can reset the ABS and all that. And the owner of the tea shop was surprised and said, Oh, you bought a tool for one time use, but I don't think it's a one time use, so I think it's handy to have. I mean, all the other work I was able to do with the tools I had at the time, and I still have, surprise. I mean, overall, I probably spent a ton of more on the tool than it would have cost to have someone install the camera, but I got the tool from it. And I got the experience, and I got the pride of having done it myself. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of lucky for me that the OBD protocol for automotive computers and all the CAN systems and so on are still standardised. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if in five years or so, or even today with modern cars, uh, 
that's like a dealer only thing which is horrible from a view of right to repair like you can't fix it you don't own it I strongly believe that most of the things I own I can fix I mean perhaps I wouldn't fix the phone myself because I still have warranty on it and all that but um, I probably could I just wouldn't want to because in the end of the day I could have it fixed for less than the parts would cost to do it myself and just the parts I mean hell um, with that OBD tool I did get one other error from the car I don't think it will come up again since but I will check again sometime um, which is apparently one of the globe plugs is bad which take a lot of work to do but the parts ain't expensive so I would consider doing that myself but I'm fairly confident it was just a one-off thing because I reset the code and it ain't come up again so the glow plug just went good once or so. Um, longer term, ignoring glow plugs apparently can lead to some dead failure which is fucking expensive I can't afford. Uh, but I'm fairly confident it's still good because with the mileage this car got one shouldn't have had to change them yet still got another 50k or so before should really consider changing them yeah funny how that work and the thing with st stuff like that is with big city life either you rent a workshop for a couple of days which you might as well have pay someone to do it or you do it on the street, which means you can reassemble it all on the same day you've disassembled it all. Assuming with the outside, as in glow plugs, you'd have to take off the front bumper. Can't can't leave the car standing there with no front bumper for a while. Uh, might be a bit dodgy. But, yeah. I guess that's the thing of big city life. Countryside, you can just park in your yard. Disassemble the whole car, reassemble it again whenever you got the time, and no one's concerned because it's in your yard. Huh. Yeah. This is like a possession of pride for me, actually, this car. I, I take pretty good care of it. The worst I do to it is I do smoke in it, oh no. But I've been a smoker for more than half a decade. And I do still clean out all the ashes and shit on a fairly regular basis to the point where if I go across the dash I don't got much dirt on my fingers so I'm happy with that really. But it might be outside of my financial means to sustain this in the long term which is slightly concerning I guess. Like very, so, very much so concerning. Because I mean I gotta be able to sustain the car with what I got like selling off things for at least another year and a quarter and that might just be tight because that's including one general inspection and then again besides that I'm treating it well I'm getting my oil changes done on a regular basis and all that and these engines are said to last approximately three times the mileage this car currently have I treat it well when it's cold I don't go high revs or so uh, I guess it's a car you can't really thrash because it's a big car and don't corner easily which means take your time I'm actually fairly proud of managing to these days just uh, take my time with traffic like I'm not concerned about oh I gotta go if someone gotta go I let them which brings me back to a thing I started saying earlier about the brake lights uh, just yesterday actually had a guy next to me on their phone the road was going to narrow up front theoretically I should have had to let them go I thought nah if they're on my phone for too long, they don't notice, so I won't let them go. Then I let them go, and I even told them their brake lights don't work when I notice. So, they were real happy to know that, I guess. Uh, 
their lights would have been red by the time they got there anyway, so they certainly didn't mind. They had the window open, so fuck yeah. It's always a bit odd when you have elderly people and you tell them because they don't do it themselves. Well, brutal stereotype from here, but I guess most of the elderly people wouldn't do it themselves. There we go, that's probably a better way of phrasing it. <laughs> like, I can't imagine some, for lack of a better term, granddad changing a bulb because I mean with older cars it's easy but with these modern ones you usually got to take off some interior cover uh, which you got to know the right spots where the clips are got to be able to undo clips without breaking them and all that and I wouldn't be surprised if most people go to a workshop for a brake light which is kind of almost sad I guess and again, it's good for the economy, as in more people got jobs if people change brake lights for a job. If you'd want to do that for your job, it's something everyone have got to decide for themselves. I wouldn't, but I'm different, so I'm just built different. So I guess I can't use myself as benchmark. I guess some people are happy going to work, changing three dozen brake lights, brake light bulbs in a day, going home watching TV, going to sleep and starting over again. Hmm. Funny how that works, I guess. Yeah, like, I got about two and a half to three jobs worth of work to do for uni currently which means realistically I don't got time for this here sitting and smoking and talking to myself but I think that also means I should be doing it more um, because there's more shit on my mind and more issues and so on so I guess this has reached a point same as going out socialising also for me um, well, I see it as some kind of necessity, but I really don't want to do it, which is a funny way of looking at things, really, because how necessary can it be if I don't want to do it? But I guess that's how things work. I mean, the necessary things you don't want to do because you've got to do them. It's just a childish thing of, oh, no, i got to do it. I really don't want to. With a 10 page paper, I've at least sent the prof a potential research question. I haven't heard back from them yet, unless even though we had lecture today. Admittedly, I did only send it at the start of the lecture, or just before the start of the lecture, so hopes are before the next one on Tuesday I hear back from them, and then I can perhaps start the research. They want at least four books in the citations, which I find a bit odd because. In a month's time, it's not like we can do all the research in the world, and we certainly can't read five books. But I guess they just want us to quote snippets out of context of books, which is like slightly concerning for me because the idea of a book is to understand its context. And I mean, depending on your speed of thinking and understanding and all that. You can read at different speeds, but realistically, it's like um, hearing but not listening, seeing but not reading, like this book here. This is my current progress, it's the back of the book. I've been reading for half a year. Then again, I've understood all the pages I read, as in, I've read most of the pages twice, just because ADHD and all that. But at least I can say, with, proud, with, with pride, I have understood what I've read. And I don't believe that to be the norm. I mean, that prof got a proofread, 
approximately 60 10 page papers um well not just proofread grade actually uh papers are due early august and they said they'd be done by the end of september which means they have a day of paper but they can't read 60 uh, 10 page paper every day and grade and check the citations and they aren't working weekends so realistically they'll spend at most four hours of paper for grading it and reading it and I don't get how, how they could do that because I mean hell okay some people got more energy in their day but that's a lot of like time spent in front of letters uh, text to grade it um, but not enough for the text because hell I mean I can say 10 pages well I can I can speak 10 pages but I can't say 10 pages worth of content in the time frame we got like yeah okay I can write a 10 page paper but I really wouldn't want to put my name under that paper because I can write, a f what I'll do is I'll write the two page paper I have the time to write and then put eight pages of BS in between because that's what page minimums do. The content don't matter at that point, the quantity matter, which is like bad joke at best, sadly. Like, I don't get it, I just don't. I have wondered about um, re-releasing this stuff as a podcast, but I think the editing would be too much work, and especially if I show a graph. <gasps> uh, I guess that's a potential future project, because in the end of the day, all I'm doing is a rambler man sitting in front of a phone talking with one finger in the ear. Got fingers in the ears, I can't hear what you're saying. I got one film project shooting Monday. That's the one I'm helping the classmate with. Who don't seem to have the biggest plan of what they're doing. Then the Tuesday, the following week. So Tuesday in 11 days from now, realistically. We got a film project due. The week after that, another film project. The week after that, presentation. The week after that, a paper. Which seemed like a bad joke. Especially considering our... Toward the end, as in the last week in which the paper would be due, we have the first of three lectures, which are worth as much as any of the other things. And because it's so close to the end of the semester, I don't expect them to be able to actually uh, give us much of an exercise to do or so, because, hell, uh, we got three weeks, even though it's supposed to be five weeks of module, is not even within the context of the module, it's lecture free period, which we're supposed to be able to work on our portfolios and apply for internships, etc. But I ain't gonna be able to change it. I mean, semester have gone this far, we're now, what, more than halfway through the semester? And we ain't got no grades, I mean, some have passed their electives, I've passed one or two electives. Oh, I also got to do my work for the elective, which is write a review and do an interview and write that up yeah i'm actually looking forward to the interview i believe i'll use that as an excuse to travel to the other side of the country and interview a friend just because why not uh if you ask the right questions you can make just about anything interesting uh then again i don't know if i can actually afford the diesel so we'll have to see uh yeah that be cologne that's like what 500k trip almost one way I might be able to make it there and back on the tank of diesel but it's probably going to be a real tight one so I'll probably have to tank in which case it's at minimum in just diesel for on the road that I won't have in the tank after 150 bucks which is a lot of money good news is I can crash on their couch even if I couldn't, I could sleep in the car because I got a big car. Yeah, funny how that worked, really, I guess. Uh, 
yeah, I'm probably just going to go upstairs, make sure this here merged together with iMovie, and then go to bed. Because I got uni tomorrow at 9. Yay. And where I got uni is not viable going by car, which means I'll have to find the energy to go by public transport. Which means I'm not going to be of much use once I'm back from uni. Yay. But i got to go tomorrow because I ain't going to that course the week after because I'm going to another town for student rep thing. So, fuck yeah. Guess I'll have to find the energy to leave my flat at 8 for public transport and people. I mean, good news is I do got two of these fingers these days, again, luckily. I only cost an arm and a leg. Um, I think it'll be worth it. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the lecture. I'm just not looking forward to getting there or getting home. But that's the price you've got to pay for big city life. Hours commute to just about anywhere. Unless you live in the centre, that is. And in that case, the price you're paying is your rent. <laughs> Well, anyway, stay safe. I'll see you around. Cheerio.